drug use and drug abuse. Pag-usapan po natin yan ngayong hapon sa Kababayan LA. This is a uh, serious issue. Kasama natin representatives who are going to be talking about that today and also this coming Tuesday, September 1st. Right. Uh, we're going to be talking about that also on the show. Army Cachero is a community organizer yes. and you are with the San Gabriel Valley Crystal Meth Coalition. Yes. Hello and welcome to Kababayan LA. We are also with Manny Padua. He is a program coordinator for Asian Pacific AIDS Intervention Team. Uh, there is a connection, right? Meth users and HIV the, AIDS victims? Yes, there is a direct correlation. What is the direct correlation? Uh, the blood um, mixture when they're uh, using syringes. Oh, and sharing needles uh, yes. and all that. Okay, yes. that is so sad. That's why we have to talk about this serious issue. Also beside Manny is Greg Pacificar, and he is Barangay, with Barangay Los Angeles. What yes. is Barangay Los Angeles? Uh, Barangay Los Angeles is a Filipino LGBT, gay, lesbian, bi, transgender mm -hmm. nonprofit, mm -hmm. and we build like a social network and a support group, safe space mm -hmm. for our LGBT. And alarmingly, LGBT issues also um, correlate to yes. meth, it, how? How does it? Well, if you, you go back to like uh, coming out, you uh -huh. know, uh, dealing with family, no one really talks about sex, sexuality. Uh -huh. And so coming out, there's anxiety, there's fear that, you know, you might get rejected. Right. So people need to escape. And they turn to drugs. They could, yes. Why do you think, Army, Filipinos turn to drugs, more Filipinos turn to drugs? We have some information here, mm -hmm. and um, it's saying that Filipinos have the highest mm -hmm. among other Asians, at least in San Gabriel Valley. Well, actually, I think part of the problem is that since there is uh, 45 ethnicities and 25 languages, we really aren't collecting the right data, okay. where there's not enough data, and they're not outreaching to the different languages to get the data, mm -hmm. plus there's not direct um, interpretations mm -hmm. for crystal meth so I think that there's plenty of people who are doing crystal meth and don't realize it whereas uh, Filipinos are in a unique situation where they where they speak English and so they would understand the information about crystal meth and are more likely to get help right what's going to happen on Tuesday is you're mm -hmm. gonna have a summit yes talking about these things. first of its kind mm -hmm. and w what is this about well it's uh, actually in the San Gabriel Valley the crystal meth use um, amongst youth, mm -hmm. the treatment admissions is mm -hmm. the highest. Mm -hmm. So that's under 25, and so and we're also finding that 77% of the um, of those mm -hmm. are have started under the age of 15. Mm -hmm. So in reality, we're not hitting them soon enough. Right, exactly. Then, at 15, where do they get the drugs at 15? Well, that could be from their peers, uh -huh. or you know, just word travels uh -huh. where you know there could be a dealer. Uh -huh. elsewhere somewhere in the neighborhood. What's alarming is sometimes they say it's also readily available in schools. Mm -hmm. When you were in school, I, I mean Barangay Los Angeles, in Los Angeles, yeah. I know that's also a problem. What can you say about that? Um, you know, it, when you're in high school, especially in the suburban communities, right. there is drugs everywhere, uh -huh. you know, and they have dealers in the actual neighborhoods, and you wouldn't think like that, you know, these nice suburban homes. Right, right. How do you say no? How, do, how can parents protect their kids from this, especially kids stay in school for almost the whole day? Well, part of the reason that Asian Pacific Islanders particularly are doing crystal meth is because of the pressure to do well in school. Oh. Uh, so if there's this intense pressure to do well in school and there's the uh, second generation, third gener generation racism aspect, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're in sp particular neighborhoods where there's um, an Asian other ethnicity clash mm -hmm. and you're, you're fighting to have these good grades, right. it, it only makes sense to do a drug that will help you stay up and study and, and do well all the way through through getting your doctorate. <laughs> and, and Greg mentioned something earlier, Manny, about um, the issues and the pressure that LGBT youth, that the LGBT youth face. What can you add about that? Well, um, some experience internalized homophobia, and that's um, partly a self-hatred uh -huh. because of our uh, tradition or our, how, how our culture views homosexuality. Uh -huh. It's not well accepted. Right. So, um, Especially among Filipinos, do you find that it's also like that? In the Philippines, it is like that mm -hmm. because there's a lot of machismo going on. Right, you know, right. How about the Filipino-American community here? Um, is it pretty much the same? It could be because I think remnants of, of our traditions, w whether it's from um, our or original country mm -hmm. or from, um, from our grandparents here mm -hmm. or our, from our uh, mothers and fathers. Right, right. What do you say now to parents watching us? Your kids may be um, a homosexual. How do you deal with them so that you don't push them away to bad influences like this? I think a, a good way to do that is just open dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, ma ma creating safe space at home. Uh -huh. So they don't feel the pressure that they can't speak to their, 
to the right. mom or dad. Right. But you know what? It's n meth use is not just for the LGBT community. Definitely There's not. lots of heterosexual out yes. there. And what's alarming is, as you said, they start at 15. What do you say to parents? Well, um, part of what we'll be talking about in the summit is actually overviewing what addiction is mm -hmm. and that um, it's more of a brain disease. And the reason that we need to address it with, use is with youth is because the use of crystal meth will um, stunt the growth of the prefrontal cortex or right. the cerebral cortex, the, the cognitive functioning and executive functioning. So okay. what that means is that if we don't start talking to them sooner mm -hmm. um, and being very frank about it, right. then we're, we're not going to be able to get them before they have real brain damage or br real brain stunting. And with uh, with with parents, what they need to be talking about is to not only talk about scare tactics. Right. Because right now, right now we're still in the mode, the just say no mode. Right. Which is, has not worked at all. Okay. <laughs> and so we're going to be finding out more tactics and tips for you on Tuesday, September first. How can they join? Is there a fee for this? And where do they get more information from? It's absolutely free, and it comes with breakfast and lunch okay. and prizes and outreach workers. And um, so I, I definitely think that everybody should come. They should go to Act Now against meth.org uh -huh. um, or see that's the phone number on the screen if yeah. you want to get more information that's, that's number me. to call <laughs> yes army thank you so Definitely. much thank you and manny and greg thank you so much for, ca for coming manny i will have you back on the show we'll talk about hiv among filipinos that seems to be a serious problem as well when we return more on cover by in la don't go away